on today's episode of Based After Dark. They don't know about your online persona at all, to to an extent. I f hope not. <laughs> if you, they do, they're you have doing said a good some incriminating of... things on this podcast. You just sent it, and then when you get on the party bus, you announce yourself to complete strangers. That was a defense mechanism. You, you have more leverage than you think. It jumped yeah, out. Like, that honestly, just jumped that, out. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good defense mechanism. I almost ended up in jail yesterday. Oh yeah, I that's our you Patreon know bay. We got we got the Hamzy almost arrested story for you, for the Patreon. Fucking listening. very almost arrested. Oh <laughs> and what, you didn't say anything about this before. He did in the Discord. He did. I, I forgot. Didn't, I didn't. God damn. Oh uh, yeah. Based after dark. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Based After Dark podcast, episode 63. Uh, shout out to all of our 253 Patreon subscribers. Thank you all so much. Uh, today we're joined with Hamzy underscore IRL, Crylax, and your esteemed producer who had to keep the, the show running. And before we get into things, I just want to thank everyone for the love and support. Um, I've recently befell a tragedy but we're just going to bounce back from that tragedy it's what my dad would want he loved all y'all he loved what i did he supported what i did fully and uh it wouldn't make sense for me to to just stop you know we've taken care of everything the family's all good and uh, really just from me to y'all like it's it, it means so much um and whatnot but we got a good show for you today um we don't know what the fuck we're going to talk about where is everyone <laughs> That's a good question. I think they're all gambling uh, the the Patreon money away. Uh, I believe. Oh shit! T Papa is with Tasty and Las Vegas right now. They were there for Bodie's birthday because Bo I don't know if you guys have heard this, but Bodie's been going on an, an extravagant tour for his thirtieth. But you know, birthday bender, major birthday bender. Benders in the UK to Vegas, and now I believe they're all at TwitchCon. Uh, I think everyone, like the main people, did they already make it to the TwitchCon? Yes, uh, Seth went there yesterday, and I think everyone else yeah, is, like, is there. getting there today. I feel like all the main people going to TwitchCon are arriving today. Yeah, I saw Prison Joe streaming by himself at, at uh, yesterday Airbnb. at TwitchCon. It yeah. made me sad because it made me want to be there with him. Cause I, I know. know. Uh, I yeah. Me and Prison Joe are very big on the uh, all the trips we go on. You know, we, we always like to have what we call a buffer day, you know, where we a go one day before uh everyone else gets there and we just have one day to just kind of chill um it's great you know because then like the next day everyone shows up you know they're showing up all times a day they're getting off a flight they're stinky you know they're 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 stressed they're dropping their stuff you know jumping right into the activities whereas you know we've had a full night of just kind of hanging out you wake up already there you know you're already packed in your room and everything so i guess he just went and did a solo buffer day but he seemed to be enjoying now, himself. As the preacher of the buffer day, do you think the buffer day is better at the beginning or at the end? Oh, definitely at the beginning. I Why don't like that? staying. After? I don't like the post buffer that's day. Fair. No, no, yeah. no. I'm very big you're like on still uh, there, depressed that everyone's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you get like yeah. emo, dude. And like you're still there, and like all everyone's gone, and it's like you're just no. I'm very big on kind of getting the fuck out like relatively early. I mean, not like how early you got out of TwitchCon. I was San just Diego, about to say, yeah, because I did we were that still and going. That, was, that was bonkers. Like every people had left from the previous night, and I hadn't stopped. I literally just transferred from the table to the packing and leaving immediately. There was no chance. Which I mean, it wasn't bad at the. I slept the whole flight. I I used skip lag, so I just stayed on the same flight through, even though there was a connection. And I literally passed out through the whole deboarding, reboarding, and just stayed in the seat and woke up <laughs> to like eight hours later or something. Yeah, that's uh, the buffer day on the first day. on the beginning of the trip is very good. You know, it's very um, you really just get to hit the ground running once once things get going. For yeah, real. I mean, my first time meeting everyone was uh, San Diego TwitchCon. Is has it is it three years ago now? or Is it two years? I thought it was three. Apparently, it's two. Two. Yeah, two years ago, and that's what I did because I had to leave on a Sunday, and it was that Saturday night party, bleeding into you know the Sunday a.m. hours, and I left at like five. I think I left before that's that. When I left. Yeah, and the party was still going, 
And then the next time for TwitchCon Las Vegas, uh, somewhat of the same deal. It was, I believe, that Saturday morning or that Saturday night bleeding into Sunday morning, and I caught my flight and left early Sunday. Because, man, there's nothing worse than getting home to a trip, getting home from a trip, and then you get there at, like, midnight the next day, and you have shit to do the next morning. Oh, like, fuck that. Yeah. That's like, the buffer. That's where I take the uh, uh, end buffer day. I'm, that's I'm what I'm talking home. about. Yeah. Like, the extra that's the extra day at home. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the buffer day I like the most because, dude, I cannot come back from the vendor and just not have a day to not think about coming back to real life for a second, you know, or at least having a day to say, hey, like, what do I actually have to do? Because I'll wake up that that next day is shot anyway. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's why I always take that's why I always take a couple extra days. Um, I mean, after Orlando, that's when I discovered, I think, my new favorite post vendor um, activity, going to the movies alone incredible highly recommended post bender activity fried Ooh, just go in, in dude just me my weed pen and some very expensive popcorn planet of the apes <laughs> you know dude, amazing i, I you, even yeah, took an extra true. didn't you fall asleep though that one time you did that well yeah but i went back in <sighs> yeah but i feel like that's an expensive nap <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the thing is, dude, I actually paid for the second ticket, too. Um, Aw, good man. I, I could have just stayed in the theater, you know? Like, okay, here's what happened. Like, I got in. I was like, this is going to be a good idea. I'm going to go to the movies. As soon as the movie started, I maybe got, like, 15 minutes in, passed the fuck out. Uh, woke up with, like, 15 minutes left. And I'm like, where am I? And then it's like, dude, the like end fight is happening. And like, I'm like, who are these characters? And like, yeah. and then the movie ends. And I was looking so forward to it too. Like, I love that series so much. And, and I was just so confused at like what I just saw. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go home. <clears throat> and then I sat outside of the theater, just like in the parking lot, just like stood there for like, I don't know, man. It seemed a lot longer than it was. It was probably like five minutes of me just like deciding if I was going to go back in or not. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, dude. I ain't got shit to do. I went back in, bought another ticket. The lady at the thing was like, didn't I see? I was like, just give me the ticket. Man. Don't, like, don't me question me, bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, why are you looking at me you, like that? Who like, are you? You work here. It's got nothing to give do with you. Give me another ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want don't my money me. or not? Yeah. So I went in and then, uh, it, it, honestly, it was kind of an interesting way to like experience the movie because you know, then, like, as I was watching for, like, for real this time, like, I had already kind of seen what happened at the end. So, I'm like, oh, that's who that is. And that's, like, I just, I, I just, I like to think of this character that he goes out to the movies and he just doesn't get it the first time. Like, he sees a, <laughs> he sees a really complicated, and he's just sitting there at the end of the credits and going, I got to watch this again. I don't, what the fuck happened? And he, and he goes back up and he has to buy another ticket to understand. Uh, that's how I am about time. like reading books, dude. Like I, I fucking will read a full page and then I'll be like, what the fuck just happened? And I'll have to read it over again. Dude, I told I this to a doctor when I was a kid and, and, and he said okay. to my parents, yo, I think your kid's got ADD. And my mom said, fuck you. We're going to see another doctor. <laughs> yeah. Quick note she on said that. that shit doesn't realized, exist. <laughs> when you guys read, do you read like is there a voice in your head when you read like you hear it in your own voice absolutely uh because i, I be learned that apparently means like there's something wrong with you because i do that and I you do have like, a voice yeah. yeah like if you are if you're reading and you read in a voice out in your head and you're not just reading it like if you hear a voice in your head while you're reading like something's fucked up with you like that's what i don't where did you i, I did research on that is that recent or is that like early 2000s pseudoscience that you'd hear from your third grade teacher i don't well i was I, like a, a year or two years ago, I was getting back into reading books or whatever, and I had always like apparently pe like if normal people according to and what the fuck is normal I don't know but I was doing looking into it because I was like I was having the same thing where I'd read like a couple sentences or read a page and then just forget what the fuck I just read or what even was happening so I'd have to go back and read it a bunch of times and. I remember looking into it and it said, it's like, yeah, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to just read the words and comprehend them. There's not supposed to be a voice in your head that, and multiple different sources said this, like, and it's all Google. So who knows how the fuck, you know, if it's really accurate or not. But I remember reading that. I was like, dude, I thought that was normal, but apparently that's not normal. 
I feel how like does this compared to having like an internal monologue though in your brain. Yeah, I mean like I don't know. I've only know my own experience. That's why I'm like Well, that's I that's what I do anybody. whenever whenever I as a kid when, when I would read, I'd have a voice in my head that was the narrator and then when it got to the characters, I had a I had an idea in my head what they sounded like and I read yeah. it in that voice too. I mean, that might just be a higher form of cognitive function. I do know that like uh there was something really popular going around on like TikTok and like reddit where it's like there's six stages in your brain of how you like visualize things and like it's like zero it's either zero to five or it's like one to six but like try to picture a star just like a drawn like star in your head like there are people that are at zero that can't visualize it they for for the life of them they can't even conjure an image in their head and then you have people that are one and they're like oh i can do the outline and then there are people that are two and like, oh, I can do the outline and I can fill it in. And then there's like three and it's like, oh, I can do a 3D star. And then there's like four and it's like, oh, I, I can do a 3D star and move it around in my mind. And it just like goes up the, the chart of like your cognitive like function of how you can visualize um, uh, anything in like problems, I, I guess. But like maybe that has something to do with your inner monologue too, because maybe there's people that have no inner monologue. But I don't understand how that will work, because how do you think without your inner monologue? Well, no, most people, like a very high percentage of people do have it. Yeah, I but would imagine. I think it's a little different. I don't know. For me, I don't know. My inner monologue, I feel like, is two people. I don't know. This might sound a little weird. <laughs> He's but, <laughs> we're schizo. We're schizo. I, I, I don't know. I know that sounds a little... I know that I'll sounds like a that. little schizo. Maybe it is, dude. But, I, like, my that, inner that, monologue... That's what it means. Bro, my inner monologue in my head is two people and it's like always one person being condescending to the other yeah it's like what it's like an idea and then it's like a other person saying don't do that that's stupid as fuck what the fuck are you thinking that's like self-talk yeah that, i feel like it's fair. probably not two voices hamzy it's probably you <clears throat> but just your different personalities because you have a left and a right brain right and the left brain wants yeah. certain things done and the right brain wants certain things done bill burnham has a song about this about how like your personalities really depend on like your left and your right brain function. Yeah, and, yeah. And they clash. Bro. So like, yeah, that makes that make you know that's I would say that's normal. I Bro, he's got the that. legit devil and angel on the shoulders. Dude, yeah, that's kind of how it. it is. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> he's yeah. got it. No, well, more or less. There's no morality if you don't have that. You don't have a choice. If you only I have I guess so. If you I mean, it, maybe it wouldn't be an absent of like morality, but it would be a stuck morality, like a stuck personality. You wouldn't be Absence able to of grow. Critical thinking. Yeah, you wouldn't like, be able to grow or change one track mind. without another like voice in your head being like, "Is this the right way to do things? Really think about this. Like, you think this way because you yeah. were brought up for eighteen years to think this way in your household. And a lot of people, when they escape that, you know, they gotta, they gotta, they grow into uh, eighteen to twenty five, and you know, then then their personality switches. But like by the time they hit thirty. That's about who you're probably going to be for the rest of your life, unless something traumatic happens. Um, Damn, bro, I wish you had this to explain to like my first three girlfriends, bro. That's yeah. where they all had BPD, dude, or at least developing PD, BPD. Well, so you have a type, <laughs> dude. I very much do, <laughs> unfortunately, and they it like it tracks to me like the plague, bro. It's like a magnet. Dude, I know how the, the fuck it works, and it's the, like and it hides. It's like a. It's like a predator, dude. It hops out of the bush and just surprises you out of nowhere. And you're just the victim. Bro, there's this girl that works up at the ga my local gas station that's like a minute drive from me. And she's got the colored hair, the tattoos on her fingers, tattoos everywhere, the the goth chick set up, piercings everywhere. And I've seen her a couple times and I talked to her, but the last time I talked to her, I was like, hey, you're too good for this place. I'm like, <laughs> you're too cute. But what's a cutie like you doing in a I, place like this? No, because I, dude, the, the people Rave. in this area are all like poor white trash. Like, it's starting to change a little bit. We got these brand new townhomes coming in. So, and they're like taking a lot of the land and like taking down abandoned buildings and, you know, gentrifying the place even more. So that might change. But yeah, I went in there and I was like, I was like, what are you doing here? And she's like, ah, oh, it's an easy job. And I do other side stuff. And I didn't press her forward on her side stuff because, it, yeah, what did she mean by that? Uh, it could have been. It could be stripping. It could be OnlyFans. It could be full blown prostitution. I wouldn't put it past anyone around this area. But I mean, we do side stuff. I mean, yeah, but like, there's some side stuff that I, I may do, do. I do side stuff, dude. It's hard for me. Like, uh, like my um, my my boss tasked me with 
uh, putting together uh, like a coworker outing uh-huh. for our department, and you know that shit is important. Like I, I, I genuinely yeah. do think that, and I want to make it happen. Um, and I've done a lot of work to try to make it happen, and like all the days just don't work. And then she's like, "Okay, well, you know, I got his coverage. Like, you know, we have to, like, we found this one." particular time and it's gonna be you know wednesday night and i was like oh that night doesn't work for me yeah and she's like okay well like we can do it next wednesday night and i was like that doesn't work for me either she's like <laughs> no wednesday nights <laughs> i was like I'm i can't do wednesday nights she's wednesdays. like what do you she's like you're a full-time employee here like what commitment do you have every single wednesday night and i was like I'm in a bowling league. It's this dude. I make it sound so <laughs> sketchy. Like I don't know. I, I I feel like I could have just made this not. I was. I just have a thing with. You could have said anything. Like, <laughs> you could. Some of my internet friends that we do, and she's like, "You can't just not do it." And I was like, "No, but like we make money from it." So she's like, "But what? This is your job. What do you mean?" This, Am I One not allowed to have something else outside this job? What are you well, saying? Like, am I, I your I just, slave? Like, <laughs> am I, is my saying. soul enslaved made... to you? Like, I would have pressed her back. I'd have been like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I, I don't mean, owe you no, anything. We have like, very open, uh, we have very open, like, line of communication in terms that's of, like, fair. I'm, I'm down that's to, fair. like, talk about things. I'm not, like, I don't hide shit, but this is where the... You'd prefer the boss yeah. not to watch. <laughs> well, no, I mean, they already have your Twitter. Yeah, yeah. They already have your Twitter. Yeah, don't they? No, but that's that's supposed to be HR, not they said uh, they have. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's HR, the and they're not yeah. telling everyone. Like, look what Hamzy tweeted. That, that's yeah, the, what they're yeah. supposed to. I mean, yeah, yeah okay, as far as so, I know. So they no don't know about Twitter. your they can't online. Find my Twitter. They don't know about your online persona at all, to to an extent. I fucking hope not. <laughs> If you, they do, they're you have doing said a good some job incriminating of, things on this podcast. Uh, the that, duality of Hamsey is such a dichotomy that is like, it's amazing. Like to be honest, like it really uh, is, Hamsey. You are. A, I know we say that like you're a tank, what a beast. Dude. You're you're built different, beast. but you are truly a specimen. Because it's the two voices in the head. It's you the know? two voices. <laughs> yeah, but like you Maybe go from a, a normal career job, career driven job. <clears throat> you stream. You party harder than anyone I've ever met. You do the podcast and then then some. I don't know what even you do in your regular day life besides sleep. You know, you got to sleep, eat, and shit, and all, all in between there. I don't even know how you have time for that. The thing is, I know exactly Hamzy's job because I worked in that exact type of thing. I did wasn't the same job, but I worked alongside someone that basically has Hamzy's job mm-hmm. like every day. Yeah. So I'm like, I know exactly, probably even more so on his you know area and and the amount of people that are in that area of the the country in that type of hotel you know so i'm like bro how the fuck do you do that like i like it like, I, I i i but i i like it though to. like i i i like i don't know man i feel like in like another lifetime i would have loved to go into like acting or something mm-hmm. but i love I playing like different actor not to sound fucking bipolar as hell but like i like to play different characters in different parts of my different aspects of my life yeah like i like to wake up and be this person from you know nine to five and then this other gremlin in the after hours and have you done a lot uh, of solo travel in your time have you have you done that at all like like have you just gone to places travel yeah dude honestly i've told this story on the pod before for sure but the only, I think, solo trip I ever took, well, I just spent, not just, but like a couple months ago, you know, I spent a month in New York for work. I don't normally travel for work. That's not oh, yeah. something I normally do. Um, and even people who do travel for work, a month is a long, so I was just like living in That's a long time, the Big man. Apple for, uh, for a month. So, you know, that kind of had that experience, but. I think the only solo travel experience I ever had was an accident, and it was when we were supposed to go with my friends. They all asked me if I wanted to go with them to see John Summit at Red Rocks in Colorado last year. Awesome. And this was the week before I was supposed to go to EDC Vegas. So I was like, yeah, I'll go with you guys, and then I'll just segue over to Vegas right after, um, where I was meeting with a different group. And then, um, and then they all ended up canceling 
on the on the Colorado part and Bro. That's and, actually- and 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 you know the reason why I ended up sending so I actually was like okay I'm not going to go like that like I was full in that decision and then I tried to sell my ticket and I posted my mm-hmm. my price for my ticket of like what I was asking for same price I bought it for you know whatever I just want to get my money back and be out and I get all these messages like fuck you fucking scalper like ban him from this like fuck and then I was like whoa 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 dude look oh like, i think it's just like on the app and, i think it is what was it called? Uh, i can't I remember what it was but then i found I out I that it. i got scalped like mm. i didn't i i when i bought when at the time that i bought i don't even remember where i bought my ticket from i usually am the kind of person who buys directly from the venue website yeah, i'm not like a too, around yeah. the yeah. third party type I've had person. so many bad experiences doing that too with the around, like getting the yeah, yeah, no, no. I normally don't. I, people and I shit, think I must have like just done annoying. it so quick without looking. I was like, "Fuck it, this is the price." And then I found out. I think I got scalped like twice the price. So now all these people are thinking that I'm, and I was like, "Dude, dude, whoa, whoa!" Like I'm not scalping anyone. I'm for. just asking for yeah. what I bought it for. I didn't realize I got scalped, and then it kind of dawned on me that I was not going to sell this ticket. And I was like, yeah. "Okay." I can, and then I, even after that point, that's not even when I decided to go, that's not even the point I decided to go do it. I was like, I don't know. I remember like maybe just deciding to take the L on it. I hadn't canceled my flight yet. Um, I don't know. I was just at some like late night kitchen after thing and like late night telling this story. Yeah. Just, you know, the late night kitchens after the club. Bunch oh, of people just oh, 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 like a diner. Yeah, you know, late night, late night kitchen activity. Gotcha, you know, gotcha, gotcha. club yeah. after the club. Boom, you get home. The after everyone's oh, just oh, okay. on their feet, talking, yelling, conversation in each other's face, riding out the buzz of the night. And I was talking to this girl and like just telling her that, like my situation. And and honestly, she was the one who convinced me to go. She was like, "You have to do this. Like you are." Like, think about the kind of experience that you could have. And I was like, but going by myself, that's not. And I don't know, she really did motivate me. Like, I t- I, I, after the trip, I came back and told her, I was like, by the way, fucking thank you thank for you. Yeah. that conversation. She was like, I don't even remember what I said to you, but sure. <laughs> I was about to say what she offered us. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, we had like a two yeah. minute conversation where you said something that clicked in my brain. And I went on to have one of the most like epic solo weekends of my life, dude. And honestly, dude, it was kind of nice to be in a city by myself with days to kill. And like, I felt like a little tourist, you know, going around and seeing what the fuck this place has. Um, like I went on a hike, dude. I went to, uh, 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 dude, Colorado's uh, beautiful, man. Yeah. I w- oh, Boulder. I went to Boulder for a day. I went and hiked, um, dude, I hiked this mountain and, and I found fucking Buffalo Bill's grave. Uh, oh shit. That's cool. What? Dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, you didn't even dude, know about yeah, it. Yeah. Just, like, you just went on this random nah, hike? dog. I just was like, holy shit, bro. What the fuck? Uh, well I was, I was, I was not like I stumbled upon it, but I was stumbling. I was like going through and I saw like a sign, like Buffalo Bill's grave this way. And I was like, what? Oh yeah, yeah. And so I went and I was like, dude, like mad respect. Um, I don't know. I like, I like your football Shout team a Buffalo lot. Bill, man. Um, <laughs> Josh Allen's my man. Who was? Uh, he did Buffalo really well Bill? for my fantasy. Was that did the, really well for my like fantasy a, team? Was that the Alamo he's guy? Like a Western guy, I think. Dude, if I can like keep it a stack with you guys, no I'll fucking know who Buffalo Bill. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, if you put that on like a paper and put a gun to my head, I'd be. I'd, you could pull oh paper, my but God. I but I can I tell you, he's shit. buried in some fucking mountain in Boulder that. I, I hiked up to and and you know I just had to pay my respect like hell yeah dude you shout know? out bro <laughs> yeah shout out yeah the reason why I, Buffalo Bill shout yeah. out Buffalo Bill the reason why I ask about the solo travel stuff is because I started doing that from a pretty I want to say early age in comparison to most just because I've always been a big music festival guy and what it always would happen was similar to what happened with you with this with this Colorado thing is that you know you have a you plan out in advance, sometimes I guess too far in advance, and then everyone's so wishy-washy with plans, you know. I'm always the one, like, if I plan on doing something, even if it's six months in advance, I'm buying the ticket and planning to go, and I will be there. There's no, like, I will be there. If the plan is set, I will be there, unless, you know, bar some crazy circumstance. But so yeah. many yeah, times you plan happened where... with intention. Yeah, exactly. People don't plan with intention. I was like, where are those fucking people at? You yeah, know? yeah, what you just flaking for? Yeah, so they would just cancel, and then... 
I'd end up just having these tickets, still wanting to go, hyping myself up the whole time. Like I, I like plans because they help you. They like like motivate you through your daily life. Like, hey, I got this going on in three months. It's like the base trips or something, you know? It's like yeah, yeah, look I like forward to. looking forward to things. Yeah, yeah, having something, something, anything planned to be like, hey, this is why I'm busting my ass every day. This is why I can wake up and get out of bed even on the days I'm tired because I want to go. I'm excited to go do this. Yeah, and the people would flake, and I'd be like, eventually, I just said, dude, around like 21, 22 years old, I was like, dude, fuck you, guy, I'm going anyway. Like my whole life, I've moved around the country. I've been to so many states. I've had to meet new people all the time, bro. I'm just gonna go make friends and like go alone. And then that just started until I, dude, I've been to like so many EDCs, random festivals, like Electric Forest. I went to alone, like I just randomly. I I never been to fucking what is it, Ohio? I think in my life, or that's Lost Land. I forget. I've been to so many, but anyway, I would just always go and travel alone, and then end up just meeting people. And it, some of the best experiences of my life, honestly. And you know, on. when you're also in a foreign city, I was actually just before um, I came to the pod, I was just at dinner with my sister and I was telling her like how I got this date coming up on Friday. Ooh. And then she was like, that's cool. And like, I haven't heard you talk about this in a while. Like, when was the last time you were on a date? And like, because she was like, I'm pretty sure when you were in New York, like you were saying you were going on like dates every week. And I was like, shit, well, now that I think about it, I haven't gone on a single date since being there. And, and there's this thing about being in a foreign city, I feel like, where you just have this activation to go meet people. It doesn't have to necessarily be dating related but i feel like when you're any in any foreign city like not where you live you have so much more of like a open drive to just go do shit you're in the wilderness basically yeah yeah no uh, go out explore like have a have an experience i never yeah, like when you're at home it's like you don't care i never solo traveled uh until i started doing this for y'all and uh went out to my first twitchcon by myself from georgia all the way to san diego uh, thankfully, I had a buddy out there uh, that picked me up and dropped me off at the place I was staying at. And, you know, uh, ever since then, I've done mostly solo traveling um, out to places now. And uh, I mean, if you want to count car trips, I've driven solo tons of time between Georgia and Tennessee. But you're meeting people there, yeah? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm meeting people there. Uh, oh, do you? Are you guys considering like, I mean, like you're solo seeing, travel? There's nothing. Like, go that to no a place to by yourself that you're going to. Oh. No, yeah, I've you're gonna spend that. all your time there alone. I've never done that. No, that's like I moved across the country. Like I've driven across the country by myself before, like twenty three hundred miles. That's no, like... I mean the only time. I mean I've flown and driven places like by myself tons of times. But like, yeah, I think that Colorado trip was like the only time I ever went with the intention of like not actually. Now that I think about it, I did have someone that I was planning to meet up with that day i mean that while i was there it was the girl that i dated that was the girl who turned lesbian i think you t you ah. yeah i think you mentioned this like around oh, that time yeah. when that happened I yeah 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 that. oh i fully fucking like loved that girl dude <laughs> like like, like i like, like dude we dated and and we i mean i remember the like right the she dating was lesbian or no like what happened not while we we're dating uh. i mean not fully. Well, I mean, that was but, that, at but, that time, like the. the no, Colorado no, no. It was time? like no, it was right. like um, like uh, when we had our little fling. It was like six months before, and I told her that I had this trip like way down the line. That I was like, that's where she lives. So I was like, I'm gonna be there. You know, maybe I'll see you. And and she even told me like, stay with me when you come. You know what? It, like, and and I didn't want to like overstep, so I got my own accommodations and things. I was there for a concert mainly, but but. Yeah, but you know, when I went to hang out, I met to stay up, with them on there. Like, I don't not no, even know. No, well, I'm just glad I fucking didn't stay. because I'm glad I didn't because oh, really? she didn't tell me in the time between that and that that she now had a girl. Bro, she, like, when I met up with her the one time, we had like a real cute ass day, honestly, but I could tell something was a little. And then I, I like, she dropped me back off at my hotel and I tried to get her to come in with me and we there's still plenty of time in the night too and and then she was like oh sorry i have to go home to my girlfriend 
Yeah, but if you stayed there, that would have hindered your masturbation. Or. Or you would have yeah, done. Or you could have got the double decker. I mean, yeah, I yeah, no, dance, but but but, like, but but I mean, ended up being a very good move on my part to not stay there because make then it that my yeah. only plan. Um, but I remember then I had like I was really like thinking that like the rest of that night, and then I had a whole day and night after that I was um, I, I don't know, man. In my mind, I was like thinking maybe I'll spend this time with this girl. So this was when I had a whole day and a half in a foreign Dude, city by myself sucks, with nothing man. to do. Um, it sucks when you go in but, with the expectation like that or something like even like a slight yeah. expectation that's <clears throat> like that is even an, a possibility. And it's just like, damn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what, what the fuck can you do? I found a dispensary right next to my hotel. Yep. I went and bought a pack of free rolls they got beautiful they're, they're big on the scooters you know in denver and i yeah those electric just ones. went and fucking dude oliver tree in my airpods <laughs> fucking lit joint bro and i'm just scootering around and i went to this place where they have all these like kind of like monument type things and dude i had a fantastic night by myself uh and then next day dude just what do people do? Google. What do people do in Colorado? Fucking number one answer. Go on hikes. So I was like, fuck it. Let's go, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bro, Buffalo Bill's grave. Paid my respects. I don't know who you are, but, you know. I know your name means here. something. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Has some beautiful up there, importance. dude. Yeah, oh, that's man. That's like me when I was fantastic. in New York City. They have those bikes. And I remember just being, like, off my ass at, like, 2 a.m., Hit, like everything's open like hit this like little italian diner spot got a cannoli you know fresh cannoli, yeah they got the bikes in new up. york they do not have the scooters because they cannot handle that up there i don't think yeah they don't have the scooters they do have the bikes on the bikes are cool and yeah that was a a time for sure um yeah i think i got a nice little uh picture oh dude and also that trip uh <laughs> i had I had a night with a, 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 a nice lady that night that that was um, the girl that fucking hated me at first because I was wearing my T-Papa merch that said fuck pregnant bitches. And, <laughs> but uh, laid out in she, the end, clearly. She like really didn't fucking like that. But if I totally anything, it opened the, the door, no? No, it fully, fully opened the door because I, I flipped the script as if like, no, it, the, the, the saying is like, fuck pregnant bitches as in like, have sex with them because they're so beautiful and we love them. Hey, dude, that's <laughs> what, a, that's like, what a dumb bra. Um, I would not have bought yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I would not this have is bought the pic, that. Uh, this is the pic I just sent you guys in the after dark of, uh, that was the, when I went to see, uh. Uh, oh hell that's yeah! Like close to, that's close to uh, Buffalo Bills. Oh, grave, that's dude. that's where Buffalo Bills buried. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Who yeah. Took the Hello, picture? beautiful. Uh, there was uh, like some other hikers up there. Oh nice. Someone asked. I, I honestly didn't even think about it, but someone asked. Someone like walked by and asked me to take a picture of them. So after I was like, "Would you? Would you maybe? That's. <laughs> <laughs> would you mind taking a picture of me? I found out it was um kind of like not a frowned upon thing to do but people thought it was weird but in my earlier times like going to festivals and shit i was always the person that especially if i had just went alone or something i was because i didn't never mind i love the music so much like i can always just vibe alone but i'd see people like there's always the one person in the giant group that's taking the picture you know and they don't get to be in it so i'd always be the one to like ask you know, hey, do you want me to take the picture for you guys? And apparently, like, people think that's weird, even though I was just trying that, to be That's nice. weird? Why the fuck yes. would that be weird? I don't know, but that was something that people thought they were like, it's almost like you're trying you know to who, You know who thinks that's the weird? The something. people who have never been the person taking the picture. Incels, yeah, and people that... But it's the person taking the picture that was like, you know, gave me a weird look, like, no, no, we're fine. Oh, like, really? Yeah, oh, they're trying to score. like okay, shit. All they're right. trying. To you know what, dude? Like they're probably just they're probably just self conscious about the way they look in pictures, and they didn't want to be in the picture. Yeah, and now you force them to be fair. in the picture. Yeah, insecurity, man. It's a, it's yeah, it's a just like the look was clearly like like what the fuck are you doing? Like type thing, you know? Like you can tell that's on your face, and I was like, all right, peace. Let me just walk this way. I won't ask Damn, to dude. help anybody ever again. Yeah, um, not everyone's oh. like that, obviously, but like 
definitely being a, I even, um, like i was paranoid i looked that shit up i was like is that weird to do and like people said they're like no yeah, that's, that's a nice thing i think so too yeah it's but just apparently a that's like a thing that's like oh it's it's like a girl thing it's like they're like oh that's guys just trying to get like in to talk to you or something like they don't really care and i was like look all right like i'll just be i'm just gonna leave everybody alone like i'm fine <laughs> It's Helping hard to people seems to be an issue. Well, you know, it, there's always that one girl in the group that if she even sniffs out a guy just being nice and she just shuts it down. I feel like there's always that one bitch. We call them the wall. Yeah, there's always that one bitch that she's like, "No, it's girls' night. No guys." I fucking ran through that wall. None of but, my but, girlfriends <laughs> are fucked tonight. You know, it's like I mean, dude, this on. is a this is a put the pads on. This is definitely a thing. I mean, when you go to a solo kind of party concert, something like this, this is kind of a hard line to walk because it's like, obviously, it's not the norm to go to one of these things alone. alone. Yeah. But also, like, I'm not fucking, I'm not going to, like, kill you guys. You know, I'm just, like, trying to meet people and have fun. But There's one of me. I understand. There's, like, 12 well, of you. <laughs> yeah. I'm also fucking well aware of how people can be at these yeah. events. So, yeah. like, it. it it's a it's a hard line to walk where it's like I'm trying to be friends with people and meet them, but also like I get why you are skeptical of someone who's by yeah, themselves. 100%. But I don't know, dude. You just gotta end up putting yourself out there, and sometimes you get shut down, and people make you feel like you're Piece of fucking shit. weirdo for doing nothing wrong. But it's like whatever, dude. You know, honestly, good for you that you're keeping your guard up. At least move on. Yeah. Like I've I've had good experiences with it too. Like I've definitely like met cool people and like I've had people come to me and it's just like it's been good too, but it's just definitely it's like a Oh yeah, yeah, those yeah. Two types of things. I yeah, mean that time like that I out. went I was nervous like when I went for that um concert cuz all my friends canceled on me. I was going to the show alone. I thought what am I going to do to meet people like or just I mean I'm going to vibe by myself, but like if I can maybe meet people before um, gonna need transportation from downtown to Red Rocks. So I looked up like a par a public party bus, um, that just anyone can buy tickets to, not like a private thing. And and I bought a ticket for that. Uh, I know and I those. showed up cool. to the corner where it was supposed to pick everyone up. Everyone's waiting. You got like a couple couples, group of dudes, bros, group of girls group of mixed you know everyone's in a group i roll up by myself okay you see e this which group do you try to go for like for dude which, which everyone are... i showed up <laughs> wearing my fuck pregnant bitches shirt and dumb as shit Hell bucket yeah. hat dude, case w. of uh white claws and said what's up everyone my name's you a case of white claws to it that's the move, well i but... stopped on the way yeah because it's a party bus so yeah. i need someone to drink on the way everyone had drinks with them True. um but i was like what's up everyone my name's hamsey all my friends canceled this trip on me and i just decided to send it by myself and w fucking People warm welcome yeah. warm welcome dude that's and it was honestly awesome. like i think it was like 95 percent girls too w like it was like i think it was like two guys who were there with their girlfriends me alone and then two dudes who were just bros with each other who were yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah, that it, it's it, it's just funny the psychology behind it because not everyone would do that, Hamzy. Like first, like most no. if all their friends canceled, most of them, most people I would imagine would just not go. But the fact that ninety percent, yeah, the yeah. fact that you just sent it, and then when you get on the party bus, you announce yourself to complete strangers. That was a defense mechanism. You have more leverage than you think. It jumped yeah, out. Like, that just honestly, jumped that, out. Yeah. That's a good defense mechanism because I feel like a lot of people, it, even if they sent the solo trip, they wouldn't announce it. They would just get on the party bus and start drinking. Maybe make maybe make like light casual conversation after the, the bus gets going and maybe music's going. But you just got on there and you were like, I'm Hamzy. Hi. No, I, fully, <laughs> I fully met people that I'm like still like keeping up with on social media and shit yeah. he hit he hit the camp counselor like honestly he like hit the introduction dude she was kind of a camp counselor yeah 
Yeah. I saw that. Oh, I was she like, was. Dude, I was talking about you hit the roll. Like, I didn't yeah, know. you did. Oh, <laughs> you, you literally hit the camp counselor. Yeah, you went. You did the theater camp. Everyone go around in a circle. <laughs> That's not what I meant, but Say yes. Your name like, absolutely. Oh, okay, well, yeah. Like Either one makes sense. No, she definitely was like the mom of the group. And I was like, listen, lady, like, hell yeah. I'm, I'm going to win you over somehow. Dude, that's the one that, that needs it the most, is the mom of the group. They act like True. they don't, they yeah. don't want it, but they need it yeah. the most. That's, As the oh, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I just sound so the fucking group cringe. Half the time, I'm like, saying, I, 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 I need I that feel, shit was that cringe? Too, 100%. Was that, no, no. <laughs> was that cringe, guys? And the moment that left my mouth, dude, that voice inside of my head was like, what the fuck are you saying right now? I was a beggar. Holy I've learned shit. to ignore that voice. It it helps a lot. Holy shit! Sometimes. I don't yeah, know. I just well, feel like that's so fucking. I don't know, man. I feel like back in the day, it was so much easier meeting random people. When I went to concerts all the time, um, I never usually went by myself. It was usually with a girl. But you know, you would go to the the venue early because you wanted to get like you either wanted to be in the pit or you wanted to get good seats. And I would make so many friends just waiting with people in line because there'd be so many groups of people. And I feel like back then, like. Uh, 20, 2011 to like 2015, it was just so much easier just mingling with everyday people, especially if you're somewhere where like you're all there for the same event. Um, yeah, you have, a, you have a common interest. Yeah, and I feel like now with like social media and like hyper awareness and uh, true crime podcast uh, has ruined that for, for everybody. I Dude, I swear to God, true crime podcast has ruined uh, relationships and like going out to meet women. Uh, because it's just so, so if anything it's it's just made me more self-aware of my position in the world as yeah a, i agree yeah that's male. how i'm just i'm very just adverse to opening up to that just on the off chance that i'm gonna get fucked over on some dumb shit i'm just like dude is it worth it no like yeah. usually no well like it's you also about that's why how... i'm like when that's why you, when you get the quick shutdown that's why i'm like okay you know what peace i no get second. it go ahead yeah. like yeah like at least your head is on a swivel. I'm not gonna fucking sit here and try to convince you. I'm yeah. one of the good guys, you yeah. know. Whatever, dude. At least you're. What could you do to convince them in the moment? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, you there's know? no like once that is not, once you that know? once you get that initial reaction, like there's no coming back from that, and you have to understand that. And if you sit there and be like, "Oh, what do you mean? I'm one of the good guys?" That it just makes you look weird. No, it and, makes you like, look like a piece of shit. It's also about how you just present yourself, like um. I, you guys have met me. I'm big as shit. Like, I'm very tall. Like, growing up, I, it never really clicked in my head. I always felt normal. And, like, I kept that same energy. And it took me a long time, like, especially as I was growing. Like, I had to present myself a certain way. Because if I go and think, if I entry frag too hot, people... You're people, intimidating. I'm intimidating. And I never, I never realized that. It wasn't until about later in high school and college. People are like, hey, man, tone it down because you're big as shit. And when you come in hot, like, we don't know what your intentions are. Like, we're just up. Like, guys and girls told me that. And I was like, oh, shit, I never even thought of it like that. I always just thought, you know, I'm a, I'm a big golden retriever, I feel like. You know, I just, Yeah, your personality is not intimidating at all, for sure. Not that you couldn't be if you wanted yeah. to, but I'm just saying, like, you know, you're, it doesn't, it's not like you're deep voice, introverted, like, super, you know intimidating like some people are yeah well the voice sure. definitely helped because they hear me and they're like oh you don't sound like a, a smoker trucker on the road 12 hours a day like dude and like we've had we had this guy at my college named big schmo just big schmo big schmo he was uh about six two like 270 big scruffy beard severely balding in the front scraggly long hair in the back and just had the deepest fucking voice and I'll never forget, like, he came in for the first meeting, just quiet as shit. And, you know, all the linemen are there. We've been there for a year or two already. And, you know, the seniors have been there for four years, five years. So we're just cutting the shit. And we see this guy walk in and we immediately like, jump on him. Like, yo, what's up, man? What's your name? Who are you? Like, what are you here for? And then his voice, like, talk. And I went, holy shit. How old are you, man? He's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm 22. And I was like, holy fuck. You do not sound 22. You sound 42. 52, maybe. You know, it's just, it's. And he looked scary in the dark. He looked like a clown with a hat on. You know, like <laughs> you know the clowns that have the bald cap in the front and all the hair in the back. And he looked like a sorry smell. You'll probably never see this, but it's what you look like. Yeah, sorry smell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard real. you saying. Uh, I heard you were, when you were talking about like the meeting people like in the line or whatever. I, I, it, like just 
random thought, man. Like, I think lines, any kind of line is one of the best places to meet people at. Yeah. Unless you're, you're stuck there, there anyway. <laughs> you're stuck there Bathroom anyway. lines, drink lines, line entry into the event. Any kind of lines. Lines, lines. Not Black Dude. Friday. <laughs> lines, lines. You're taking lines, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're probably not Black I, um, Friday or, like, the new iPhone coming out, but, like... I, um, I, I went to this, uh, uh, like, big beer hall to watch. Uh, it was when the last World Cup was going on. And um, where, where was the last one? Was it in Qatar? Is that where it was? Yeah, the yeah, UAE, and, and, UAE and, right? And so, like, so being, like, East Coast Saudi US... Arabia. Uh, they had like really crazy start times of these games that were like super early in the morning. And so like in our, you know, around here we had bars opening super early, like packed with people drinking that like times that you would never normally have people at the bars. And it was when uh, the U S I think it was, I think it was the game that got eliminated by the Netherlands. And I want to say the game started at 10 AM. And so all my friends uh, wanted to get there at 8 a.m. so that they can get a table. And I was telling them, guys, that's ridiculous. Yeah, 8 a.m., uh, two hours before the game starts. You don't need to do that. It's like, I'd you be ready to leave all, when it starts. <laughs> I was like, you guys are all batshit. Like, I'm going to roll up around 9, one hour before. They were like, okay, well, suit yourself. We're going to get there at 8 a.m. Um... And so they all got their 8 a.m., got their table. I show up at 9. Fucking line. Down really? blocks. Like, blocks away, dude. And, and as I'm getting on my Uber, I see how long the line is. And I think, like, a bouncer came out and even said something along the lines of, like, if you're not already in line, like, you're not. Like, don't, don't waste your time. And so I was like, okay. Like, I went to the ATM across the street and I pulled out a hundred bucks and I went and found like, I went to like maybe like the 12th person in line and found two bros and gave them hundred bucks, 50 for you, 50 for you. Let me just jump it's in like, with you. I'm one it's guy like by myself. your friends are in there anyway too. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. My friends are all already in there and they're honestly worried about me at this point. Like they're like, is he even going to get in? And um, so I gave them... 50 and then you know we ended up having a good amount of time to still wait even though they were like 12th in line uh, and and dude me and these Damn. two guys bonded we were joking we were laughing like life stories exchanged like i felt like these guys were gonna be like my friends for life and then i was in front of them kind of just somehow ended up and then uh right as i'm me and these three guys are the next ones to get let in to the bar they come out and put the thing in front oh, of me like they no, close the gate and they're like dude. sorry guys no more people are coming in and i look at them and i look back at the bar to, at the bouncer and i was like i'm alone you can let one more person in and he looks at me with these two guys that i'm literally <laughs> fucking <laughs> boys <laughs> and he, he's like you're not with just you're not with these two guys it's just you Damn. and i look at them and i'm like i don't know these guys i'm alone and they're like, oh, okay, we can let one more person oh in. Oh my god, Hamzy. And I go in Bro. and I I I they like close it behind me and and then I just run on in and and I <laughs> as I'm opening the door, I look back and I see one of the guys just like jaw on the ground and the other one is just looking there with a smile like nodding his head like, "Okay, good play." <laughs> Well, it's like, if and none then, of you were going to get let in anyway, they can't really be mad. Yeah, you, you know, know it, I mean? it, it's, it's nothing like, personal, dude. Like, you know, I could tell, like, I mean, one of them understood. Them and, like, I have no idea who they are. You've been just yeah, like, I just met it, them, you know? Like, yeah, I don't even know these fucking guys. I also gave them 100 bucks. You did you pay know? them 50 so, bucks. Yeah, yeah and so. they didn't yeah, lose yeah, anything. Yeah. They, they probably weren't going to oh. get let in either way. Oh, yeah, no. And when I by the time I got in, you know, my, my friends were all, like, unsure if I was going to get in or not. By the time I got in. They saw me walk in all cheering. Oh, yeah, let's go. You know, had a fucking giant beer waiting for me. W. W, dude. I remember a, uh, a similar a w, thing dude. happened to me, except it wasn't like in a line, but it was just the fact that I met people randomly. I was actually at EDC Orlando this past year, which I had just went Woo. to alone. And I was seeing Mal P for the first time, okay. which, by the way, was absolutely insane. Oh, yeah. Um, it was so fun. But. 
I had slutty brought DJ set the, probably. Yes, very slutty. But I had brought um, my own weed from the dispensary in a pre roll. So, but I swear to you, like just a pre, like I thought this this somehow dispensary joint got laced somehow. Like I don't know. I had brought it from my house, and I didn't do anything to it. That's some good shit. That's that's some good shit. <laughs> no, but let me. It was so like I had been this. I had other pre rolls throughout the weekend. I, I think this was like the second or third day, and I was in the crowd, and I was just. Just vibing and dude, one thing that's made me more friends than anything at a festival is a fucking lighter. Everyone oh, forgets yeah. a fucking lighter, bro. I have a lighter. I've made probably like over a hundred friends off a of fucking lighter. Dead so cigarette too. I have my lighter and yeah, and I'm lighting up this joint and there's just like two dudes and two girls. They're probably together, or whatever. I wasn't like in that sort of like mood anyway. I was just like and I offered them I gave them a lighter and then like offered them some of my joint. And then we smoked some of their joint, and I just became like such good friends with these people, like instantly, like just matched the vibe instantly. They were so cool. Obviously, don't remember their name because the problem was, is about ten minutes into that joint, I swear, like my vision, like it, like cut in half, and part of my vision was over here, and part of my vision was over here, bro. Geeked. And I got so fucking dizzy so instantly that like i was literally just standing there dancing like having the best time at mount p bro this set was awesome it was like one of the best sets of the weekend for me and then instantly like it felt like my head was over here and my body was over here and i could not stand up and i instantly walked out of the set went and sat down and like had like three hot flashes in a row and dude like, just, you're, like i'm i'm you gotta look for the dance safe tent at that point yeah i didn't i was like <laughs> i'm not going to any medical tent i'm not dealing with this shit <laughs> and I sat there and just sweated out for like 15 minutes, just like next to the speaker, just like bass, like just like in my fucking head, just sweating it out. Like eventually, like someone who I knew actually um, found me and like helped brought me at, bring me out or whatever. But I like and I never saw those people ever again. Like I had literally just met them like 10 minutes ago and I was like, dude, they could have been some of the best friends ever, but it just wasn't meant to be. Or dude, they like could that. have not been real. That could have been your subconscious I don't think they were real, projecting. Dude. They it. were real, bro. It was the last thing I remembered before I just like instantly. Did he have like, four arms and purple skin? And I don't know, bro. Did they, you ever see Fight it was Club? just. Ins- I looked ahead and it was just, just like everything was just separate. Like head here, body over here. I was, I was like dancing and moving, so like it just felt like my body was not moving the right direction anymore. And I almost fell over, and I just like went out and sat down. But then. What made me think like I was dreaming the whole time, which I don't think I was because my friend who found me told me I wasn't, but I literally, you know, they have those sections in like festival grounds where they have the lights or like something, some part where people can just rest or like sit down. So I go and I am just laying on my back and I finally feel like, okay. And I'm just like breathing like deep breaths in and out. And I just feel like it finally wore off and I wake up to this this girl walked over to me and like asked me if I was okay, bro. One of the finest girls I've ever seen in my life, dude, like ever. I, I felt like an angel was descending on my body, bro. I was like, dude, I literally No, woke I need up. CPR. <laughs> bro, <laughs> I woke up Step and on me, saw her and she's like, she's like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I was like, yeah, I'm fine. And I was like, I literally like looked at her. I was like, are you an angel? I was like, and she just, she, I, it wasn't even trying to be like in the moment. Like I, that's actually just what came, it was what I was thinking. And just like, it came out of my mouth and she just laughed for a second. She's like, Hey, do you want a lollipop? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And she gave me what in the moment was the best tasting lollipop I've ever had in my life. And I peaked like in that moment off nothing. You were, dude, you were just, just like, really sat geeked. there. Yeah. Really dude, geeked off weed. Like, I took They probably laced well, your joint with K2. Well, it, dude, I don't. It was from a dispensary. Like, dude, it's something about those the, pre roll joints crazy. is like the, the most weed you're going to get is at the very time you light it. So, if you're not careful and like you light it up and you take a really big puff, you're getting a lot of weed. I feel like I've definitely um, have fucked myself up off pre rolls bought at dispensaries the first t- time taking a hit from it. I feel like I get way too high. 
Just because the funny know, part is what made me trip more was this this girl putting a lollipop in my mouth while I was laying down like on the festival. I was like, dude, dude, lollipop like that kind of shit's life saving though. Like to just cl- something to cling on to when I don't know. I it think was it's a more strawberry like a, banana lollipop and it was gas. Like I, I don't the know. next day I was I, looking I think for it's, it. Like I was like, I think it's more of something one. about like when you're like rolling really hard or like tripping on something, but like having some kind of fixation to just like ground you is. Insane. It, it's so small, but I wasn't but even so like much. it was just weed. I don't know. I promise. Like I it's would K2, tell you, bro. Spice. You're smoking some crazy shit. A dispensary. That been wild. One out of one hundred pre rolls will be just like to put the tip of some ketamine. It's <laughs> funny. What's funny is like it was off the med drop. card of a of a close friend like that had been that gave me stuff from there before. So I was just like, I'd never occurred to me like i felt like i just greened out or something which more than likely what know. happened just dude weed is so different from when our parents and grandparents and ancestors oh, bro were, even, bro, weed even is so from like different from when we were weed is so different from when we were in high school and college yeah I they've agree. lost the plot they've lost the plot dude americans have gotten so uh like hyper focused on the way they grow weed to make it so ridiculously strong that Bro, the, the second the capitalists got it man the second yeah the yeah yeah the plot it, has been over, lost man. and and it's like i but i also don't know what the answer is like we used to correlate good weed to strong weed but now i'm like is this shit's too strong yeah it like makes your head hurt it's dude, like, it dude. makes me fucking terrified of life. I kind of <laughs> like that. Like, man. I'm fucking just there's, there's no the most better scared feeling. I've ever been, and nothing's there, happening. There's no better <laughs> like, feeling. Than, like, than, why than, am I? There's no better feeling. Dude, I saw, someone, I saw someone say the other day, like, uh, the best part about smoking weed is getting scared. <laughs> it, dude, dude, I really like, like, dude, why am I never sitting? been louder, bro. bro I'm at my fucking PC in my computer chair. This is the fucking safest place on earth. Why am I scared for you, my life? No, you're like, terrified. If, <laughs> you're at, you, 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 why you're am I terrified, dude? dude? crippling fear like, bro it's, it's it's crazy dude. like so what is the answer is it like does do we just need like do they just make it less dr- like is the correlation not the same just smoke less of like good versus strong like what is the bro it's probably like the pesticides and everything they use them to keep it good and shit or something i don't know like, you think that's know. what it is you think it's like a ca- no. you think it's I think going like once it's more i think unnatural? once it's mass produced i think when it's mass produced capital like in a capitalist environment everything else goes into it to keep it like on that so you think it's getting unnatural i think it's getting unnatural absolutely no i don't i i think it's getting more natural i mean you just have to think with the the science of botany and like how far like we push our 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 veg our vegetables the shit we can grow uh of course it was only naturally though yeah uh, you 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 talk about but resources to grow weed are getting more and more available to people yeah, like it's in like the things with pesticides is most like the best weed ever is all indoor grown, where it's a yeah, controlled climate yeah, yeah, where yeah. there there are no bugs, there are no uh, creatures, no molds that will eat the weed. You know, uh, so like it's only. Well, the I've had best a friend shit. that's grown it from like since 2010 in his fucking house. I remember I used to play World of Warcraft with him, bro. And he literally had, like, he started with eight plants, and he used to legally grow weed in, like, Maine or some shit in his house. He ha- and then he ended up with, like, 60 plants. And all he did was sell weed illegally and play World of Warcraft 13 hours a day. And I actually, like, a couple years back, I talked to him, and he's like, dude, like, this shit, like, they're adding, like, because he still, like, grows these, the shit they add to weed now is, like, insane. Like, like you're saying, it's, like, it's so much different. Well, it's on steroids. Than- yeah, I don't know. It's, like... I- I, I wasn't sure if it was like a chemically added thing though. Who knows? No, I I really feel like this the the growing um procedure and like the quality production, like there are companies that put millions of dollars into this shit to get the best, the highest wielding THC they can get with all, and they make new strains and you know, are you yeah. an indica guy? But it's, also, it's like a craft that people are yeah. honing in on. Like a farming le- like like a like a 
like like a planter type, you know, the yeah. way people like get really into beans, growing. Like, yeah, like the way gardening. people get into growing flowers and stuff, they care for the, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that what it is? Are you just doing too much? So like, what the fuck do you do? Do you just not care for the plants as much and maybe not let it get so good quality? Like, is it, this is the question. I'm like, is it quality directly correlated with just how fucking strong this shit is? Like, is there any way to make it just so not strong, but still great and nice and fresh and beautiful and lovely? Well, I, I feel like we're just at the point where the industry is just has and has been for the past probably decade. They're just trying to make the highest yield possible, because if you yeah, can, if, that's the fucking shit. Yeah, you, that's what and I'm that's, saying. Honestly, like, that's that's where it's bad, because it's like then you turn weed into like a crackhead light like style. Drug that's the use, goal. Where, where it's like you just take one hit and oh, I'm high now. I'm good. Whereas, I don't want to fucking sit and have to smoke this whole fucking thing to get a little buzz going. True. But I want to sit and take a couple well, rips and pass it around, and we enjoy the time that we spend well, smoking this thing. That's where have you, you notice that shit burns quicker too. Like it seems like it burns quicker. No, it burns way quicker. It's a lot. It's lighter. It's fluffier. Yeah. There's, there's more trichomes than there is plant. That's the goal. And Hamzy, as you as the consumer. You know, it's going to get better with, you know, as time goes on and, and you know, they decriminalize it federally. Like, that's going to be huge uh, and more and more states pick up on it. But it's all about what you as the consumer buy. Yeah, if you're buying Top Shelf, Moon Rocks, Black Widow, White Widow, whatever the fuck they're selling now. I don't or, fucking care about strain names, too, because yeah, no. not to be skeptical, but like, I don't believe. How do I fucking know what the fuck is a strain? How do I know this? What makes uh, what may something fucked up with your mic? By the way, yeah, I think you're, you're talking your, through your AirPods you're now. You're on your AirPods, but mic. also, dude, what makes this White Widow, for example? You know, it, is it a seed that it comes from? It, it it's from like, this the is a seed. White Widow seed. It's it's a seed. How do I fucking know, bro? Like you don't. I have never paid that attention to anything when it comes to strain. I'm like, listen, I can tell by certain characteristics if it's good or bad levels of good i can tell the very like how good or bad it is there we go i don't fucking care about what the name of this shit is it's marketing hamzy at the end of the I day don't, it, it, that's why it's all bullshit bro it's a fucking all looks the same like it's like like it's not like a it's not like a fucking burberry polo that has the you know, you can well, tell it's, that's this what is they're, fake Louis. That's what they're trying to do with it. Be, I mean, like, you have heirloom tomatoes. You have rose tomatoes. Like, you, there are different strains of vegetables, Hamzy. It's the same thing with weed. There are different strains of flowers. But could you not look at an heirloom tomato versus uh, another kind of tomato and be like, this is... Different, yeah. You can do that with You weed. can look at it and see the difference in, like, the yeah. type of strain. Like, whether it's sativa or not. But I would say, like... Platinum berry cookies and lemonade stand. Yeah, how am I supposed to look be, at the yeah. fuck or know what the fuck this shit is? Yeah, dude. no, no, no. I, I, the really I only hate, difference is like, like percentage and terpenes and shit. Bro, know? yeah. I'm like, don't talk to me about strain names. Let me look at it. Let me smell it. Let me smoke it. I'll bro, you, you could call it Frank bad. Sinatra's ball sack as long as it has the yeah, highest percentage, bro. There I'm, probably fucking, is. I'm buying it, bro. There probably is a strain. <laughs> dude, dude, I would smoke like the fuck out of Frank fuck Sinatra's of ball sack, Me dude. too, bro. Me too. Oh, dude. Yeah, okay, so actually, saying. can I tell you what I, I found the other day, which I think is extremely valuable now and fucking insanely relevant to what we're talking about? I was on stream the other day. And I was talking about my old roommate from college who I lived with, who was like, I can't call this guy a pothead because the term pothead doesn't describe what he is. He's a marijuana. Is this to do with like the Bitcoin? Like you were buying yes. weed with Bitcoin? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Yes. This is my roommate in college who used to buy Bitcoin before Bitcoin was worth anything. And this is how he used to buy all this shit um, in, on the Silk Road. Yeah. When that was a thing. Shout out to Silk Road. Bro. So he's he's not he's not a pothead. That doesn't that term doesn't really describe who he is. I I I think of him as a marijuana enthusiast. He loves the craft of like I don't know. He doesn't grow it, but he loves the gadgets and the gizmos and the toys and all the paraphernalia. And um, 
we had this box in our apartment when we lived together. It was called the Haram box, where we kept everything in. And uh, he somehow, I don't know. I mean, I guess when you got to do it, you got to do it. But he literally overnight dropped it all. He got a government job and, and you know, drug test. Like, it's no choice. Like, it's at that point, I guess that makes it an easy decision. Like, no choice. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. Um, True. So, so, uh, so I remember he came over to my house and brought the box over and, and, uh, and, and I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, the only thing that I really cared about that was inside of it was the grinder. We had a space case, which I still have somewhere. Um, and, and, uh, the bong, which sadly broke last year because I used to keep it outside. Very Dad, tragic you had story. had it for that long? Dude, this, the, the things that this bong survived was like ragers dude in the middle bro, of our none of mine place. survived any of that shit, oh bro. dude this I bong has survived that. so many things and i feel so bad that i broke it because when i brought it to my parents out when he gave it to me i brought it to my parents house and i used to keep it outside and we had these like record low temperatures last winter and i kept it outside in the shed it was like laying on this thing of concrete and and it got so cold. Like I went to go just grab it one day and I like, I picked it up off the ground and the bottom was just non-existent anymore. Like just damn. Yeah. Um, so, so I mean, honestly, after that, this box, I forgot about it for like, I for completely forgot this boxes. I've had this box for fucking like maybe like six years, dude. <laughs> And I completely forgot it existed. It's just been in my closet. And I, uh, I can't remember what conversation that brought, got brought up while I was streaming the other day that reminded me of it. And I was like, shit, dude. Like, I think I... Ha and I, I, I thought to where I might have hid this thing. And so I went to go check. And it was there. And I looked in it. And all sorts of gadgets and gizmos and, you know, things and... Uh, Lighter, Bro, I think we were talking about crypto, and, honestly, and, and I think you mentioned we, it might have been crypto. It might have been that. crypto conversation because that was a relevant part to the story as well. But then inside the box, I found some OG oh, 2016 weed. weed. Oh, Dude. like maybe. And like, I told you not to smoke that shit because it might be molded, and you might. Bro, I have been <laughs> smoking the hell out of it. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Hansy. Somewhere between like. Uh, Somewhere between like an eighth and a quarter of some like eight Damn. year old weed. Just aged like fine wine. No, it's not molded. It's in a plastic bag. It's fine. Yeah, as long as it's not molded, you're chilling. Sealed. Deal sealed. Speaking yeah, of. Uh, I've been smoking a lot of this weed though. Like I've been bro, like real flower tree. And I've been loving it. Yeah, is it just. Dude, it's a different type. It's a different type of high. Than you just gotta get shake, like, Hamzy. You just have to buy shake now, because all the shake from the dispensaries are the is the old weed. It's the lesser weed, and you. Oh uh, hell no! What you mean shake, dude? Dude, shake yeah, is not shake, shake anymore. Though. Okay, it's not 2010. Dude, it's not I think of shake as like the leftover trash. Yeah, shake now though is. Bro, shake used to be stems and like shit. Bro. Yeah, like, no, awful, dude. Uh, it's like what's can't. left in the bag after you dump it at, out. Like... Uh, at my old dispensary when I lived in Illinois, I would buy like five gram shake bottles, uh, and it was still like 23% THC, and there were no stems in it. It was all pretty much just grinded up. There's some buds in it, and dude, it was the most mellow high I would ever have. It was really worth it. Um, it wasn't very expensive. I, I remember it's like forty bucks for five yeah, grams of shake. I mean, we used to get like when we. I remember we used to pick up like a stupid amount, like a pound or something. A alleged pound of shake. <laughs> no, a pound of like just regular weed uh, because it would it would yeah, just lower yeah. the cost. Dude, and we had a I, bunch of boys. You split it up, yeah. you know, type deal. Yeah. But I, w along with it, we used to just get like for four or five ounces of shake just to send it with it and that was just the like the emergency bs that we would smoke if we needed to oh that know. shit was still working i've Andy, had um like the whole roller coaster of uh like levels of pothead 
that I've experienced throughout my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I've, I've had eras of me, like just, you know, let's meet up, rip a bowl. Um, I've had eras of let's roll a joint. I don't really care about how high we get. Just, you know, want to enjoy the activity of sitting around smoking, hanging out, being social. I've had eras of like, let's rip a fucking fat dab. The fattest dab yeah, I can like possibly Yeah, like debilitating. Pack. One hit that is just going to put me on my fucking ass for six hours on the couch. And yeah. um, I, I like, I like, like it all really ended maybe like a year or so ago where like, this is like the first point in my life that I think I didn't consider myself a pothead. And that's when I was like, you know what, dude, I don't really be picking up weed anymore like that. I just, you know, I'll have a weed pen and maybe rip it every now and then if I get home from like a night out and I'm like tweaking a little bit and need to like, just get to bed, you know, maybe just hit that before, but not like something that I like need to have on me at all point. Sure. So, uh, but have you had a nectar I'm collector like, before? A nectar collector? Dude, what is that? Those yeah. are sick. Sometimes they call them something different, but it's basically like it's like an a apparatus. It looks it's just like a cylindrical device with like a a tip on the end, like either a quartz tip or like a metal tip of some sort. And you superheat the tip, and you literally there's a mouthpiece on the other end, and it has like water or no no no, no water no water and uh, you you heat the tip and you just put it directly on the oil and it will just like heat it and you just suck it up like that yeah it's like, is, like, this like a, is this like a glass like apparatus of some sort? yeah yeah they, imagine, some imagine you're like a hummingbird i like, just searched get, nectar, nectar collector like, osrs <laughs> <laughs> yeah look at that thing i remember like the that's probably one of like the moments in my life where i was like dude i've only ever did that once and i probably never did what is this thing dude you put it to your mouth like a and pipe. the other it's an oil pipe basically like, yeah. you know, what do you like and there's no water you don't like you get you, a blowtorch you superheat the end yeah, you superheat the end and it just oh, goes so you directly put one on mouth, the oil one, one end on your mouth and yeah the and other then like end, say like that you have you oil superheat. in this hand and you take yeah. it and you go you stick it in the oil and it smokes oh just that's kind of crackhead like yeah i mean it's dude, super like, yeah, super like crackhead. i mean yeah dabs and like oil is like definitely the most crackhead way to smoke weed but shout out to you Papa. um I mean, you know, if you've ever had like a uh, like a dab rig that you've used heavily, you know, you know, over time it gets real brown and it has it gets like coated, which is fucking probably what the inside of my lungs look like. But oh, um, definitely I remember, yeah. yeah, we used to uh, what we used to also do <clears throat> was like after, it, you know, when it gets like real heavily coated, sometimes we would just start lighting around the bong with the torch or around the rig mm -hmm. and just heat break it that up a shit bit. up and it turns liquidy and then pour it out onto some aluminum foil oh this my doesn't God. sound good oh my God. you know what i would do <laughs> i told you like i said it. like i said dude oh i've my... gone through all the dude, roller coaster I, of like I, I casual smoking to reclaim, like crackhead bro. style resin dude. i mean dude Re in this reclaim. box i even have like thing. rig style like i have like a converter that you can turn any normal bong into a rig and and no I no no I don't I do not I I do not fuck with like dabs or oil at all, oh, at all at this point anymore um actually the last time I smoked a dab was the fucking first time I met any of the based homies in my life uh in, you hit it with T Papa right yes it was with <laughs> T Papa uh yeah. In Arizona, like 2021, at the first ever meetup we ever did in Thanksgiving, in uh, Thanksgiving in Arizona, um, I'm still sad I couldn't make it. Fucking Crylax, you were going for your Infernal Cape at the time because I remember we had you on the big screen. Yeah, and and everyone was watching you do your Inferno on the big screen, and me and T Pop were in the back. We had a bonfire. And T Papa packed this. He was like, "You want to take a dab?" And I was like, "Sure, dude." Didn't you guys try and, to heat uh, it on the bonfire? Yes, yes. Dude, <laughs> we were pa he packed us the dabs, and then he's like, and then he realized that he didn't bring the torch. So we're like, we don't have a torch, but we're sitting in front of a bonfire. 
And so I remember we're fucking le- like leaning. Dude, like I got my, I'm pretty sure I got one of my eyelashes burned off. Like leaning into the fucking bonfire. Good. <laughs> super wild. heating this dab. And uncle of all people come, walks up and sees us doing this and is like, you guys are crackheads. And that moment right there, for uncle to Just call you that. a crackhead is a moment of awakening. Peak, peak crackhead, yeah. <laughs> you peaked in that Like, I'm like, oh, I'm a crackhead, but like, as a joke. But when uncle calls you a crackhead, dude, you, you might be a little bit of a crackhead. Might yeah, just a be. tiny bit. Speaking of being a crackhead, um, Twitter Workshop, who's got tweets? I have a tweet. Bro, I actually have like I 10, uh, might I'll not have some. a tweet. I have a tweet. I might have a tweet for you, Hamzy. We'll see. I don't know how many you want me to read off, but I like after two weeks ago, I went into the tank on for the draft. So, I mean, they're probably all mostly mid, but I got them anyway. You want to go first, uh, Cody? Yeah, uh, my tweet them? is, of course I know when people are hitting on me. I grew up with multiple uncles. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's after dark. That's after dark, for sure. Okay. I just fucking thought of one on the goddamn rip. Okay, you want to go? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Hold on, wait. I just, I got to fix it one second. Okay. I think I have it. <laughs> oh, God. Damn, for on the spot like that. Okay, like, okay, you know, okay. okay uh, Saint Tits should not have trusted my horny ass to bring donut holes to the pod this week. Wait. What that, does that, that even just went mean? over my head. What does that even mean? <laughs> like, I brought you guys donut holes as we record the pod, as if we're, like, in person. No, well, that's fine, too. What did you do to the donut, donut holes, Hamsy? <laughs> I, I was like, dude, my what mind did, just went what to like. What did you do to the sexual. donut holes, Hamzy? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, dude. I just brought them. I just bought them for you. Brought them for you. They're, Enjoy. Glazed. They're, they're extra glazed. They're. Oh, that's just the. Gotta, that's gotta, just yeah. the. Why does the one. glaze look like this, Hamzy? I like it. I like dude, it. That's like how it looks, bro. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme does donut holes. Krispy yes, Kreme. Kreme with the C. If Hamzy's, if Hamzy's. All right, Krylax. What you got, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm of the bunch that I have. I'm just gonna like pick three. I'll just do a, a three rapid fire real quick. We're okay. I'm gonna go from like what I think the worst is to the best. Let's okay. start with the worst one. We're RS guys. Of course, we're up for 14 hours at 5 a.m. on a Tuesday. Yeah, I think Mid. that has a lot of potential if you rework it. Yeah, I think I'm I'm firing at a million cylinders right now. Do you want to workshop that one, or you want me to continue? No, continue. That one has that one. Continue. Has, we can come back to well, it. Well, we'll continue. Continue. But okay. You might have discovered something there. Stop asking for money. I'm chasing the bag, but that motherfucker quick. Okay. All right. Man, the last. And the one? last one. Call my balls a credit card the way they are plastic, and I pull them out at restaurants when the bill comes. You pull your balls off? When no, the- call my balls a credit card the way they are made of plastic, and I pull them out at restaurants when the bill comes. When the balls and microplastic meme was going around, that could have had some. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, that you can was do a callback. Yeah, you can do we a callback. also have if all those don't work, we also have give me five tacos and a horchata, I'll show you a fire wave. <laughs> yeah, I, like, <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. That, so we're going with that one. I like that one. Save the RS guys. I want to revisit that. Yeah. That okay, we can revisit it um when we have more brains on the yeah, like more bodies to think of stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, are we ready to tweet? Yep. All right. Three, Three two, two, one, send. One, send. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I am very interested to see who's here. You have me, Krylax, and Saint Hits out here. All your favorites are gone. Hold so it down. If you're actually still listening, you're a fucking real fan. Or you forgot so, this podcast was on. Or you're asleep. Or you're dead. Or you're just coming back and listening right now and you've had this shit run in the background. If you happen to still be waiting, I would love to fucking know. Comment, I'm a fan. Because I want to know who made it through this whole episode Bro, without all your episode favorites here. This good, man. Yeah, we this killed this shit. If you this made it through this, you actually saw some gold. Who would have fucking thought, dude? Absolute I underdogs. Do. I, I want to say that I definitely thought from the beginning. I Didn't I call that shit? I was like, it's going to be good. Yeah, no, I mean, well, I we, we, we actually put together a banger. Who would have thought they all said it was impossible and we are going to go to the Patreon now. And I almost ended up in jail yesterday. Oh yeah. That's our you Patreon know bay. We got, we got the Hamzy almost arrested story for you, for the Patreon. Fucking very almost arrested. Oh <laughs> And well, you didn't say anything about this before. He did in the Discord. He did. I, I forgot. Didn't, I didn't. God damn. Oh uh, yeah. Well. Well. We'll see you there. Subscribe to the Patreon. See ya. Don't skip. We have some news for you because we have recently reworked our entire podcast format. We will still be conducting one normal podcast a week, but now tier one patrons will have access to a weekly exclusive patreon podcast that's going to be even more based and more after dark we've also updated our other tiers to include perks that allow you to directly interact with the podcast and influence the topics that we speak about the patreon will be linked in the description below